So if you're going to be a web developer and you're going to be building websites, web pages, using JavaScript to make API calls, getting data from different places, it's important to understand URLs and what makes up the different parts of a URL. So I've built a page here and I've got it hosted up on GitHub. So I'll leave this link in the description for the video. But basically, we've got all the different parts that we could have as part of a URL in here. And this is an interactive form to let you see how it's affected by changing these different parts. So we'll begin with whatever we have here at the beginning to the left of the colon slash slash that you get for every URL. This is the protocol. So we can have HTTP, HTTPS, even FTP is something that you could bring up in a browser. So if something's publicly available through a file transfer protocol, you could do that. And there's other protocols as well, but those are the three main ones that we'll be working with when we're building web pages or dealing with APIs. The username, second part, nothing here right now for the username, but sometimes if you're doing FTP or you're accessing something that's behind a hidden directory, you might need to pass along things like username and password. So we can add a username. So if we put the username here, it's going to be in front of the domain name. In between the protocol and the domain name, we'll have the username and then an at symbol. It used to be that you could put the username and then a colon and then the password, but that's kind of frowned upon now. So what will happen is if you add this and there is a username and password required for whatever it is that you're accessing, you will be prompted at that point for the password. We can do that through JavaScript as well, but just know that if you ever see this, this is the username that's being passed along. Three parts to the domain right here. We have the subdomain, the domain name, and then this part right here is called the super domain. So this could be .info, .org, .com, .io, whatever it is. This is called the super domain. The domain is the part inside here, and then the subdomain. By default, with most web servers, what you have set up is www is the default subdomain, but it could be something else as well. You could have, like here, in the domain that we're on right now, professorsteve.github.io. So Professor Steve, that's the subdomain. We could do that in here. We could say, all right, Professor Steve dot example dot io or dot github dot io there we are so this is the subdomain and then this whole thing together is called the fully qualified domain name next we have the path so it always begins with a forward slash that is the end of the domain the first slash this represents the root folder Every web, every web server in the world has one folder on its computer where this is where we store all the files that people are allowed to access. Regardless of whether or not there's a password, they all fit inside this folder, and that's my root folder. From there, we're just describing the path to get to whatever the file is. So maybe there's a CSS folder, maybe there's a JavaScript folder, maybe there's a media folder, something like that, or you know, we could say media slash fonts slash something. This is just describing the path from the root folder to your file that you want to load. The last part that's being shown here right now, this is the file. This is the resource that we want to get. And it doesn't matter if it's HTML or um, you know, product.pdf. It's just, this is the file. This is the actual resource that we're sending back. It's a PNG, or it's a JPEG, or it's a PDF, or it's an HTML file, or it's a PHP file. Whatever it is, that's the next part. Now, coming after the file name, you can... Oh, and there are some times where you will have a file name that has no extension on it as well. This gets done a fair bit online. So this part, that's the file name. Following that, there's two pieces. There's the query string and the hash value. The hash value originally was just the ID of some element on the page. So I could say, hey, you know, I want to find the thing on the page called main. And I'm going to shrink this down 
just to make it a little bit smaller just so we can fit everything on here at the end but you can play around with this experiment all you want so we've got the hash value hash main this is going to point to something on the page with the ID main but a lot of uh, JavaScript libraries like uh, Angular, React, and so on, they're using this for routing. They're using this to decide, oh, should I load this component or that component on the page? Just know that this is not necessarily information being sent to the server. It's being used in the browser to decide what should I be showing? What should I be scrolling to? That kind of thing. What should I be targeting? Last part is the query string. The query string always starts with a question mark and it's made up of name value pairs so we could say name equals Steve and then if you wanted a second value you put an ampersand between them and you know key equals value and you can just put in as many pairs as you want starts with a question mark name equals Steve and key equals value and I've actually done this backwards in my <laughs> hurry to get this up onto github uh, this version i haven't updated uh, my local one i did but not the one on github this part right here the hash should come in front of the query string right after the file name right here so i will update that on the version on github so that you can experiment and it will render it properly all right so that's the parts of the url hope that uh, helps you out with your development if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below and as always thanks for watching